welcome to the Cover Band Confidential Podcast, the podcast for cover band musicians and band leaders to learn new things and to teach some old dogs some new tricks. Here in Atlanta, Georgia, this is Adam Johnson. And here in Greensboro, North Carolina, this is Dan Ray. Dan, how are you doing? Oh, super good. Super good. You? Doing all right. Um, we've had pretty busy weeks up uh, up until now, <laughs> haven't we? We have. We have. So busy, we missed last week entirely. We did. Um, why don't you uh, catch everybody up on what you've been up to, and then maybe by the time I catch uh, everybody else up, they'll understand why there has been an episode in two weeks. Right. Right. Well, we had um, a really big show. Actually, the Clanky Lincoln's first ticketed show, we were opening for uh, a really well-established, um, original, about half originals uh, band called Viva La Muerte. They're um, dead-inspired Americana and a lot of fun. And I've, they're good guys and good friends, and I've known them a long time. And I've sat in with them a couple of times. And uh, so this was our first show together with them. And it was at a historic theater in downtown Greensboro called the Carolina Theater. Historic theater. Yeah. It's, and, you know, in the, in the main theater, the – proscenium, you know, the arch in front of the stage is all gilt and decorated and covered with angels and scroll work. And there's a an organ in the corner that sometimes they've done silent movies with live mm-hmm. organ. It's really cool. That's awesome. Upstairs of it, in the, on the third floor of the building, there's a black box theater that's up in the very top sort of attic-y space of the building, and they call it the Crown Theater. And it seats probably, if you sat at auditorium style, it'd be maybe – couple hundred, maybe mm-hmm. 250. So we black boxed a, a show in there last Saturday. And uh, it was the first, I mean, I, I put a lot of effort into marketing it. I, I um, designed and printed big, um, you know, tablet size, uh, tabloid size flyers and put them all over the town. And the lead guy of Viva La Muerte went on the college radio and, and promoted it a little bit with some friends there. And um, so it was really fun. The p- place was packed. Great, great, great energy. Uh, really, really fun to play. And we we did some sort of big production value mm-hmm. stuff. This was the debut of the guitar. Yep, which went great. I'm I, I've already reached out to my Sweetwater rep about it. So yeah, you've inspired oh, me. It's so good. I, the the guitar I have is the Alesis Vortex Two. The Mark, yes, which is the wireless. Mark Two, very very the important. Mark II. The Mark Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mark One got some criticism for being um, sort of flimsily built, and um, the Mark Two feels like a. I mean, it it's a plastic keyboard. Yes. You wouldn't want to drop it down the stairs, but um, but it doesn't feel like it's going to crumble in my hands. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will tell you, the wireless it comes with a little wireless dongle that is happening over the five gigahertz spectrum i believe mm-hmm. uh but but it's not wi-fi and it's not bluetooth it's its own proprietary thing and the sync time is immediate and i've never had any lag from it it's um the latency is ridiculously good and um yeah i'm very very happy with it i play it through uh main stage which was your suggestion on, yes. on facebook yeah uh, which i'm also very happy with yeah main stage is a fantastic program for uh mac users you basically get all of the plugins that logic pro offers uh, for 29 dollars, which is just obscene. Oh um, yeah, it's crazy. The fact that alchemy, which used to cost almost, you know, a grand by itself, uh, is now baked into the, uh, into the software is just ridiculous. And, yeah. And they've got great sounds and they've got great templates and there's other people who make good templates as well. So, uh, I'm, I'm wading into that, that field as well. Um, very excited about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sold on it. I will say the learning curve on it is steep, and and there's the 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 depth you can go on it is deep. And I've just barely skimmed the yes. surface. I mean, I found enough. I found a nice um, a nice electric piano for a lovely mm-hmm. day, and a nice organ for Season of the Witch, and a nice fizzy synth for 1999. And uh, that was about what I used. There's just a ton more in it. Yeah, I, I love Logic's uh, electric piano sounds. Uh, yeah. They're phenomenal. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very good. I'm a dyed in the wool logic guy. It's all I've ever used. I I, I moved from Cool Edit Pro to Logic. That's <laughs> that's how far back it, it was. There you go. That's pre Adobe Audition. Well, the other thing about the show was it was a costume party, mm-hmm. and so the the band did a Blues Brothers theme, and and Justin and I were both in you know the full Blues Brothers suits with the hat and the glasses, and the drummer was in Blues Brothers top and shorts. And our bassist was wearing, he was dressed up like Donald Duck Dunn, who is the Blues Brothers bassist. Mm-hmm. And he had like a fro wig, brown sort of, it, we realized if we put a palette and a paintbrush in his hand, he'd be Bob Ross. Anyway, 
there we were. And we did. So we started the show with everybody needs somebody, which is what the blues brothers start the show with in the movie. Um, and we did the harmonica reveal gag from the movie, but with the keytar. So I came out, we walked on the stage from opposite sides and I put the keytar bag in his arms and I unzipped it and I pulled out the keytar and held it up and the crowd went crazy. And it was a, it was fun. It was really fun. Um, the other big debut that happened at this show was our 10 foot tall, uh, Abe Lincoln, clanky Abe Lincoln puppet. And, um, any of you who are, um, Friends with me on Facebook have already seen a bunch of pictures of that. He was, he's uh boy, just calamitous looking. He's, he, he was amazing. He was amazing. So it was really cool to like be playing whatever it was we were playing and look out and have, you know, this giant puppet of our mascot out there and people just dancing around him and having a great time. It was really, awesome. really fun. I know this is one of those things that you've been kind yeah. of talking about and, and kind of sweating a bit. So uh, this was a swing for the fences opportunity for you. And I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm glad to hear everything went it absolutely was. And, you know, there was there was a lesson in the night as well. We had um, – I mean, we were there plenty early, but setup took a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, Viva La Muerte Soundcheck, which was um, – they are now a – let's see, two, four, six, a eight piece. They're an eight piece. Uh, if I'm counting time. everybody. They have a, a sax and a trumpet and a fiddle and a banjo and two guitars – Anyway, there's a lot of them, and and um, a lot of them are in bands for the first time, and their stage discipline during sound check is not strong. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and a couple of times, the sound guys just like sat down and just let them just you know, I'll keep going when they shut up. Yeah. It, it was brutal. Um, so their sound check took until about 15 minutes before the door was supposed to open. Yeah. Um, and we scrambled and got our sound check done um, pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Pretty quick. And then right at the beginning of the show, both of our wireless mics died. Mm. And here was the problem. I, I, I broke my cardinal rule. I have a rule, which is every gig, new batteries go in everything. Yes. And I broke that rule with those mics because I said, well, I, they had new batteries before the last rehearsal. I'm sure they're <laughs> fine. Well, they weren't. I kicked over to rechargeables about six months ago. And when I think mm-hmm. back, like, I don't think those got a full charge. So, well, yeah, rechargeables, you never do multiple gigs for. With disposables, I could probably get one or two gigs out of maybe even three out of out of certain stuff. I don't mess with the uh, the rechargeables. They get recharged every single time. Yeah, I've managed to push it to a couple of shows, but or a rehearsal in a show or. Yes. You know, but the point is, I, I had gotten lax and I, and I, I really let. Um, uh, I, I got lax. What can I say? You know, I, I didn't follow my rule and, and it bit me that those things both died early in our, in our set. And, um, the sound guy, you know, brought up the other two mics that were set up for Viva La Muerte and we used those and it, it all ended up being fine. But, um, the, the point I want to make is that even when you are, you have the opportunity when stuff goes wrong during a show, cause it will yes. inevitably, um, to make it part of the show, to make it fun for the audience, to sort of let them in on, you know, oh, this is th- this is what we're dealing with now, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and to have it be, um, you know, you've got the opportunity to be mad the whole rest of the night when that happens. That's that would be understandable and mm-hmm. valid, but not the move that's correlated with a good performance. No. Nope. No, it is not. <laughs> right. So you just want to have technical issues. Um, you just want to include it as part of the game. You know, like we're going out there with a lot of gear and a lot of it is um, you try to make it as rock solid and reliable and, and unquestionably, you know, um, uh, predictable in its behavior as you can. And there's only so much you can do. And when something blows up, um, that's just part of the game is sometimes things blow up and it's kind of like, you know, Complaining about that's like complaining that the basketball hoops like all the way up in the air there. No, that that's the game. That's the game. So the question is like, how are you going to get the ball in it? How are you going to put on an amazing show when your mains die or when you're, um, I don't know, can't keep a G string on your guitar to save your life or whatever. Hey, this is a kid's show. It's family, family programming. Uh, listen, my, I don't know about your G string. Mine snaps all the time. Hey, that's none of your business. What my G string's doing? You know what? I, I think I think we know each other better than that. Anyway, uh, maybe. Point is, it was an amazing show, and uh, um, and as as I, as I texted you uh, after the show, there needs to be a name for that post gig euphoria slash exhaustion. Yes, 
<laughs> I, don't, I, uh, I don't have a name I for think it. I was, but. I was in the middle of probably loading out at that point. Uh, you, so you were, I didn't. We weren't quite there yet. Yeah, we were, we were in the process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, very good. So you've been busy. Yes. So, you know, we were looking at our, uh, at the month of April and it's like, okay, well, you've got four dates in April and you know, cool. That doesn't seem like a lot. Um, what I failed to realize was that three of them were within a seven day span. Wow. So, and it was, a uh, two private dates with a public date in the middle and for private dates, we're loading our, our bringing in our own PA and lights. Um, so I got a slight respite on, <laughs> on the Saturday gig, which was public, uh, where I didn't have to bring it. And that was also the first time we used our two way, um, mic splitter. So what we, what we've done is that, uh, in order to just kind of be low maintenance, uh, for, uh, venues that we're just loading into instead of bringing our own stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a 16 channel mic splitter with a, like a 20 foot fan that plugs into somebody else's existing system. So what we basically did was we came in, we plugged our fan in to their digital snake and then basically ran all the mics through the front of our board. Uh, and what that gives the front of house person is it gives them clean inputs on everything that's on stage and we get a completely isolated monitor environment, nice. uh, which means for us is that we have perfect in-ear mixes that we have total control over um, and nothing else is, you know, nobody else is affected by it, which is perfect. And it worked amazingly. So um, let, me, let me get it. So you're doing a sub mix on stage for your own monitors. Correct. And then providing it line by line to the back or all in one yes. mix? No, nope, line by line. Huh. So it's, compl- it's completely uncolored by the board. So he has independent control of the gain. He has independent control of all of the effects, all the EQs, all of that stuff. And then we have our own control of those things as well. Basically, it was two X32s doing separate jobs um, and neither the twain shall meet, cool. which was beautiful. Yeah, And it worked so well that five songs in, when their mains died, we didn't know. Uh, we kept... <laughs> We kept on playing and everybody else is like, what, what just happened? Because I mean, we play, everything is completely direct. So it went from, you know, full production show to just drums. Um, and people were, you know, rightfully confused. Yeah. And, um, they got it figured out sort of, but it was funny cause they were, the, the mains had a for sale sign on them and I had reached out to the owner about purchasing them, but, um, Given their performance, huh. I don't Drew believe your I, offer. Yes, I'm no longer interested in uh, in those in those uh, speakers. Yeah, um, but yeah, so we did we did a Friday and a Saturday, and then we had a Wednesday gig that was private. Um, it's just a lot physically. Like you know, I typically try to get to the gym three days a week. I did not touch the gym that week because um, usually my weekends are like rest time, but uh, that did not happen. Yeah. So uh, it was a uh, it was it was a lot of chaos going into the week. So we've got, um, we've got a gig this Friday, another, um, kind of high end private event. And then we're off for a little bit and I'm fine by that. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, we, it, it's good to, to be busy and, um, got a lot of good traction. And, and honestly, the, uh, the first gig we played on Friday was probably the most fun that I've had on stage with those guys in a long time. It was just, we had been gone for a little bit and it was nice to just kind of reconnect not just as musicians, but as friends. And, and, you know, it was a small party, but like really energetic, uh, enthusiastic crowd. And we just had a blast and so did they. So it was, uh, it felt really good. Sweet. Good to be back on the horse. Very good. So this topic for this week comes by request from the cover band confidential Facebook group. Um, we had put out a, um, just a heads up, uh, for anybody that was interested, um, to, you know, to help, help us pick a topic. We've gotten some new members recently. So, um, thank you all for joining and for, uh, for contributing to the, to the community. And it's been really, really neat. Um, I'm trying to look this up. This comes from, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris, I'm probably going to mispronounce your name. Uh, Chris Domin, Dominique. I'm, I totally ruined that. I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, you can call me later and, and shoot me <laughs> out for mispronouncing your name. But Chris has been um, one of the new guys in the group and has been super uh, participatory and um, just really appreciate your input. So we are going to cover uh, his suggestion this week, which is song selection. How do you pick songs? What songs should you do? 
um, how should you do them, and other questions of that nature. Yeah, huge topic. We we may we might split it up a little bit. So what, what we're going to try to do is that we've got a couple that we really want to dig into, but we're just going to kind of glaze over some. Um, and if you feel like we kind of, you know, we just skimmed the, the surface of a particular topic and you have a question. That's because we did skim the surface of that particular topic. Absolutely. But the good <laughs> news is, is that if you want uh, to get a more fleshed out answer, you can just email us at uh, coverbandconfidential at gmail.com. We will get back to you and you will get a personalized executive level response uh, to your questions. That is what we are here for. That is what we want to do for you. Plus, you know, every every bit of this that we might glaze over is worth, a, probably worth an episode or half an episode on its own. Sure. So who knows? We're, we're in this, we're not going anywhere. So yeah, it's episode we'll probably six, these things. We're just, we're, yeah, just, we're getting yeah, going. Early days. Yeah. Early days. So, the thing about song selection uh, that you've got to figure out is m- starting from the top, you know, what kind of band are you? You know, let's talk about branding for a second. You know, what genre do you say you are? Um, are you are you a particular just type of music? Are you an era of music? Are you a, a sensibility? Um, those are kind of the first kind of top level things to consider when you're looking at songs. Um, the next one would probably be, you know, what audience are you going for? Um, and that's not going to be the same every single time. You, you could look at that on a show by show basis. I made a I made a particular set list for our frat gig that we did recently, and it was very different from the set list that we did with the, you know, the hippies this last weekend. For sure. And yeah, you know, like totally a, different set list. You know, like the corporate event that we're doing on Friday will have a very different set list than what we did at the um, at the bar last Saturday. So. Right, right. Lots of stuff to consider. And the next thing, you know, speaking about, you know, crowd, ex, you know, the crowds themselves is um, what is the ex, what is the experience or the reaction that you're looking for? You know, are you there to be the entertainment as far as dancing goes? Um, do you think that you're going to be in an area where people are just going to want to sit and kind of appreciate it? Um, are, are you just there to be musical wallpaper? Uh, is this like a dinner hour kind of thing? Like all of those things are going to kind of play into that. You know, we have uh, certain songs that we only pull out at, at certain events, you know, like um, like weddings. And actually that beep was a, an alert that Gig Masters is <laughs> a Gig Master notification that a wedding is looking for a band. Um, so, but yeah, like Spandau Ballet, true. Great song. Great song. I'm only going to play it probably at a wedding. All right, number three, um, you want to consider... Your market. You want to consider what bands around you are playing, and if you pay close enough attention, you'll notice there are regional qualities to that. Um, around here, every cover band I know does. Um, Everybody wants to rule the world. Tears for Fears. Really? Yeah, it's just real popular around here, and I don't know why. I, I mean, I theorize that there was some really popular band. And I think I know who it was who did it once. And it was really exciting. And it was no, you pulled it out of nowhere and there it was. Mm -hmm. And now every band around here does it. That's not an easy one to do. It's not, but you can adapt it a lot of different ways. We put it entirely on guitar and it works pretty well, but, but you know, I can hear from the surprise in your voice. That's not one you do. Well, no, we actually, we, we do that song, but we're maybe one of a handful of people that do it. But I, I also will say that I'm, you know, this is one of those things where my, the guys in my band hate my guts. Because <laughs> like the drummer, when he started, I, I isolated the drums from the original studio recording. I was like, play it like this or we're not doing yeah. it. Yeah. Because it's got, it's got yeah. a shuffle to it. And if you don't do it right, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't jive quite the same way. Oh, it, it has a groove that is very distinctive. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky my drummer can, you know, on one hearing pretty much nail anything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so the point is. The, in your market locally, there are songs that are regionally popular and that go through phases. There's a kind of a, a fashion to those things, mm-hmm. and you want to be aware of that because you want to um, you want to play against that. On one hand, all that stuff is what people are expecting to hear, and it's clearly what the audience wants. On the other hand, if you just play that stuff, you got no differentiation from any other brand. Yeah. You know what works well is to be familiar and yet novel. You want to play some of those market tested tunes and mix them with a selection of songs that your market isn't saturated with. Well, and, and another thing that you may want to consider, and this is something that we do as well, um, if if lots of people do a certain song a certain way, um, maybe look into doing a cover of the cover. So, mm-hmm. um, 
one of the we do a couple of versions of of 80 songs where we we weren't really trying to do it so close to the close to the hip so um two that come to mind is we do 99 red balloons but we do the goldfinger version instead of the nina hmm. version that's nice that's nice yeah we do uh season of the witch but not the donovan we do the super session version mm-hmm. And then we do the Marvelous Threes version of Always Something There to Remind Me um, because it's more guitar driven. I, don't think I know that. Ooh, it's, it's really good. Um, I'll have to check that out. The Marvelous I love that song. Yeah, the Marvelous Three are Atlanta, you know, power pop legends. Um, oh, okay. And so, again, talking about regional, uh, there, there's a couple of bands that do, do it the way that we do it because of the way that they did it. Um, right. So, yeah, it's, it's just one of those, those things to consider. Um, we actually just uh, started doing the, uh, the Atari's version of boys of summer. Hmm. Cause again, it still kind of fits the mold, but like later on in the night when, you know, maybe we don't want to play Bon Jovi at the end of the night. So we'll do, <laughs> we'll do kind of a rocked up version of these, you know, 80 staples. Good. And then another thing that works really well is to put songs together in sort of, um, combinations or subsets, little, little, um, pairings or triplets of songs that work together, mm-hmm. create, um, you could actually go as far as to make mashups out of them, but, but, um, short of that, just creating medleys that run all together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was just going to mention a couple of hours cause we've been, we have a lot of fun with that. While you're looking that up, um, we've got a couple that we, we bundled together. We do, um, we do, uh, hungry like the wolf by Duran Duran paired with, um, shut up and dance with me by walk the moon because they have the same BPM. Uh, we also do the same thing with Sledgehammer and I Love Rock and Roll, same BPM. Um, nice. What we, I'm I'm a person that really loves data. So if you look in my my band folder, it's just spreadsheet after spreadsheet after spreadsheet. Um, and one of the ones, one of the things that I did uh, is I took every song on our set list and I Googled the BPM um, and started kind of thinking through, okay, which of these go together and started doing it that way. Uh, it's really easy to do. It, it, it really doesn't take that much time. There are actually websites dedicated to BPMs of popular songs. So, um, yeah. And keys too. Yep. It's really, it's, yeah, it's just one of those things that, you know, just put a little bit of effort in and you can really kind of make, you know, you can really set yourself apart from, uh, the other bands in your area. Yeah. Let's see. I just pulled it up here just because it, it fell out of my head. When I see it on the set list, I play it instinctively. But um, we do a, a subset that goes uh, No Diggity, Sex Bomb, Word Up, Crazy, Happy, 1999. That's quite a medley. It's quite a medley. And um, my favorite, the moment that ch- just tickles the English major in me, is that you go from crazy, Charles Barkley, um, to the first line of happy, for Al Williams, which is might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Oh, uh, clever. I see clever. what you did there. Yeah. And then in the next set, we do uh, Superstition, Kiss, Venus by Bananarama, mm-hmm. which nobody's playing. <laughs> Long Train Running, Play That Funky Music. Yeah. That's, and that is a killer diller little subset. Because, huh. yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't look at those on a on a piece of paper and go, those go together. But No, I, but they I can, can yeah, totally I can, do. I can totally see that. Uh, yeah, and you know there there are tempo changes between them that we've worked out transitions for. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a rehearsed thing, uh, but I mean these little subsets are the tightest part of our whole show. Yeah, for sure. The other one that we do that's like kind of a a nobody in our area is doing it is uh, we have an eight and a half minute Madonna medley. Uh, nice. That is all tied together. That goes from Vogue to Borderline to Holiday. Like it's all tied in, and 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 those actually do all have the same tempo. So it, um, you know, the, the drums are basically just four on the floor the entire time and it just goes and goes and goes. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a great, great moment in our night. That's cool. That's very cool. So sort of the meat of this thing is how you pick a, how you pick a song, what to look for, what to look for in a song, what makes a song work. Yep. And, um, I think crucially, crucially people got to know it. Yes. And uh, it's easy to fool yourself that people know the songs that you know. Yes, we are not our target demographic. I can't no. stress it enough. No, and, and I say this to people who hire us for weddings or parties and things. You know, I give them a whole set list. I give them the I, – I ask them to mark must plays and don't plays because I don't want to play, you know, his song with his ex-girlfriend yes. or whatever. 
And I say, some people like to try to build the whole set list for us, and you're welcome to do that if you want, but you should know that having good musical taste is detrimental to making a good party set list. Yes. Because I'm not going to sit down and listen to play that funky music like ever. Ever. (laughs) But when a crowd is dancing, that's exactly the song they want. Mm -hmm. So – you know, you got to know it, and 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 everyone needs to know it, and and um, and it doesn't. It, it's okay if it is not high art. Yeah, I mean, it, most things aren't. I mean, I mean, unless that's your brand. If you're an art project brand, band, which is the thing that we talked about before, I'm not even talking man cave. I mean, yeah. art project. You've got a particular ethos or feel you're after. That's a different thing. Yeah, we're talking about like dance party bands. Well, I mean, um, in the the main part of the the discussion is, is that in this case you are playing for other people. So if you're going to play for other people, play for other people. Right. And, and don't do the self-indulgent thing and fill the night with B sides and rarities. Yes. Uh, I, here's a cautionary tale. We, uh, when I, when I first got into back into the cover scene, uh, I started a band called jukebox zero. Uh, hmm. and the whole premise was this is only going to be B sides. So we're not going to play, we're not gonna play pour some sugar on me. We'll play photograph and we're not going to play, um, you know, we're, it's basically, you know, play the second popular, second most popular deal. And we thought we yeah. were like the smartest kids in the room. And the band was just slamming, probably just the, the tightest, meanest group of guys that have ever sat in a room and played music. And it was done in like less than a year. Yeah. Because it, w- it was, it was self-indulgent. And we had decided that we knew better than the audience and that we were, exactly. we didn't care. We were there for us. We were not there for them. Exactly. Now, one trick to, to see how um, – to sort of validate your feelings about how popular a song is, if you put the song name and the words chart history into mm-hmm. Google, you will find the billboard page for that song, which will tell you when it peaked on the chart, what uh, number it peaked at. You can actually dig into other charts that it's on. You know, We're looking right now at um, No Roots by Alice Merton, which is climbing the charts real hard. It hit uh, – Number one on the alternative top 40 back in February, and I haven't looked this week, but last week it was in the low 20s on the top four, the mainstream top 40. But, you know, we're watching that song climb, and it's just real clear we got to get into, you know, get it. It's the, the first one that we've been on the on the climbing side of the curve yeah. <laughs> to learn and put into our set list. Yeah, luckily for me uh, and the uh, the kind of music we play, all of that stuff has already been sussed out. Um, yes. But what I, you know, speaking of my piles of spreadsheets, I went through every single year of the 80s, downloaded the top 100 charts for each individual year and compiled a master list of a Great. thousand hit songs from the 80s. Yeah, very good. And that's where we glean our material from. And yeah. some it's, you know, then you go through the... It, it, for me, it's it's a it's a matter of doing multiple passes. So you you make the big list, and then you you know I you duplicate it, and then you start paring it down, and then you duplicate it again, and you pare it down some more. So you never lose the source material, but you're kind of refining and tweaking as you go along, and then you end up with you know a very workable amount of music uh, that fits what the band's doing and you know what you're trying to accomplish uh, in a live show. Yeah. Now, all that said about people need to know it, there is also this really cool phenomenon where you um, launch into a song and the whole room goes, oh, holy cow, I haven't heard that in 30 years. I loved that song when mm-hmm. I was a kid. Uh, you know, like takes the whole room back. Um, they still need to know it, but it, if it's not a top of mind song and it to hear it triggers something, Venus does that. Yep. When we start that song, the whole room's like, er. Um, yeah, we, we do the one, we do the look by Roxette, which is a, oh, another good one, one of those. Good one. We are adding um, Dance Hall Days, mm-hmm. Wang Chung, um, which I think is going to have the same effect. So can I? T- I have a here's my Wang Chung story. Um, I please please yes, everyone needs a Wang I, Chung story, right? I fought tooth and nail to add everybody have fun tonight to our set. Nobody yeah, in the band wanted yeah. to do it. I fought it and. We I finally got my way about a year ago, and <laughs> as of last, uh, as of the the Wednesday gig that we did, the uh, the general consensus is we will never play that song again. <laughs> I'm just, sorry, <laughs> I just thought everybody would just they're gonna lo- want to sing. Everybody have fun tonight, and I was just so wrong. Yeah, so wrong. People, yeah, it, it is it is like the dance floor killer. In this area. Yeah. I'm not sure anyone really loved that song, even when it was at the top of the charts. 
It was just I don't nice know. for like the beer drinking quotient that, you know, you'd want to throw Seems your beer like. there and go, everybody, have fun tonight. But nope, that is not the case. No. So Well, we'll see if Dance Hall Days does any better. I, I feel like that one, um, uh, I, you know, even at the, as a radio listener, when that one was out, it felt self, uh, self-aggrandizing or it uh, felt like an ad. It didn't feel like a song. Yeah. I mean, when you're, when you put your, your band's name in the song, it is kind of one of those. Yeah. Things. You've just verbed your band. Yep. We, what even is Wang Chung? Well, I, mean, I choose not to Wang Chung tonight. Well, it, Thank it you. It is in the song. Like, can you tell me what a Wang Chung is? And they never really got around to explaining it. So. Right. Right. Well, when we do dance hall days, Wang Chung will be optional. Yeah. And I think you should probably start the night by saying so. I think so. You don't have to Wang yeah. Chung, um, but if you choose to, uh, we encourage that. You will have fun tonight, yes. as the song promises. Our sincere apologies to Wang Chung. That's going to be, that'll be the show now. <laughs> oh, they're not hurting. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> well, they might I be. Don't I don't yeah. know. I haven't seen them around recently. Okay, back to business. Yes. So, um, <laughs> the other thing to look for in the song uh, that's a great cover is it has the right energy. Yep. And I don't necessarily mean. It's a dance energy, mm-hmm. although you need those. Um, you need a mixture of energies in your set list. You need dance songs. You need chill songs. You need some slow songs. You need some sing-alongs. You don't need sing-alongs, but they're nice. Well, I mean, and um, hopefully if you do it right, those things are, you know, if, if you pick a good song, there will be sing-alongs. Um, you just have to be very careful about your what a, what a chill song means to you and what a slow song means to you. Uh, because they're right. not necessarily the same thing and they don't necessarily elicit the same response. So that's right. You know, a chill song can just be a song that people just stand there and listen to. Uh, Something mid tempo. Yeah, everybody wants to rule the world is, would be what I consider a chill yes. song. They people yes. like it, but it, it's not. It, they don't dance to right. it. And then slow songs. We've been, we, we were at a, we were at a wedding where somebody asked for a slow song and we played time after time. Oh, good one. Beautiful song, honestly, probably my favorite song that we do. But when you think about it, or actually, when not when you think about it, when you actually listen to it, the song is not slow. Yeah. It actually is kind of hard to uh, to dan- slow dance to that song, and uh, <laughs> we we heard about it afterwards. So, <laughs> uh, well, we we've added um, some real slow t- slow tunes. We've added "Let's Get It On," mm-hmm. which is a floor filler. Oh yeah, for sure. True, Spando Ballet, great tune. Um, couple others. We were doing um, the NXS one. Uh, Never tear support. So the point is, you need a mixture of those because a whole other topic that we're not going to have time to do justice to here is set set list design and the shape of a set. But suffice to say, you need some options when you build your set list. You can't you can't just um, you know a, a, a mistake I made early in my set list building career was to make my dance sets my dance mixes too long. You actually can wear out a room. Oh yeah. And, um, and if you do that, they don't come back. It's hard to get them back. Yeah. There's this, there, there's a, there's a black magic to the whole process where you, you have to make sure that you are riding the energy appropriately, but you can also kill a dance floor by putting a chill song or a slower song in a set in the wrong place. And you can, right. yeah, you can lose the room that way too. There's just, That's it's right. a, you know, it, 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 it is such a dark art. The other thing that you might need to consider is um, actually the main thing you probably need to consider uh, after you you go through all of these uh, these permutations and these uh, these choices is uh, can your band play the song? Right. It seems kind of like a like a gimme, but um, there is a lot to consider. So um, <laughs> and, w- and when you listen to cover band recordings on the internet, not mm-hmm. everyone is. Ask themselves that question. No, they have not. And it's, it, that's actually what, what separates the men from the boys in a lot of circumstances. Yeah. Um, you know, do you have a keyboard player? Uh, are you comfortable playing to tracks if you don't have a keyboard player? Uh, can your vocalist sing the song? That's just, I mean, people really need to listen to themselves perform. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause that, yeah, that's, that's really as a, as a vocalist, that's the thing that I, you know, if, Here's my my two cents on on the whole cover band thing. And if you want to know my opinion of your band, here here it goes. Um, if your singer sucks, your band sucks. Yep. Period. It doesn't matter how good anybody else is. If your front line is not uh, on the level, then the rest of it's kind of pointless. Tough Absolutely. Luck. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Which is which is not to say that instrumentalists get a pass. No, they do not. You yeah. know, there's certain things just, you know, certain songs are more technical than others. And um, if if not everybody's up to the job, um, you know, it shows. Now, so. you mentioned playing to tracks. I, I, I think we want to explicitly not get into that now. But, no. uh, but I, I, I want to say, I just want to mention that to head off the hate mail that's inevitable. Oh, I, I welcome it. I, I, <laughs> I, I bathe in the tears of my of, of people who do not agree with me as far yeah. as, as tracks go. Cover Band Confidential is a pro tracks community, and if you disagree, that's fine. But you're not going. And I think it's I think it's fair to say tracks can be done badly. Well, anything can be done badly. Um, I, yeah. I just think that people who are not open minded to the possibility that it could be uh, a useful tool uh, are selling yeah. themselves short. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think badly done tracks have given tracks a bad name. People who lean on it as too much of a crutch yeah. has given it a bad name. I, I saw a guy with a guitar playing along to the whole rest of a band on a track one time and it felt cheesy. Yeah. Um, and that's a whole different thing from like, a you know, what you guys do filling in pieces that you don't have or, or, you know, for in, in our circumstance, we, we have, you know, multiple lineups. And if you can't afford the full lineup, um, then the laptop will play the key parts that I, you know, I can't hire a keyboard player to do. Uh, we're still going to give you, you know, the best show that we can give you, but it's going to be more economical uh, for the client to, you know, to get a show like that. And most people are, are fine, are, are fine to do that. Yeah. It's interesting. The people who object to tracks are band people and the audiences don't care. They really don't. For the most part. Then, you know, sometimes even if you can totally do the song on a technical level, it just doesn't feel right when your band does it. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't, you can't, it doesn't fit your sound, your, your, your ethos. It doesn't somehow it just doesn't fit with your band. And I'll tell you, um, we are pretty heartless about that. Somebody, somebody will come with like, Oh, I love this song. I'm totally obsessing on this song right now. We got to try it. And then, yeah, if, if it's, if we're not all feeling it within two or three rehearsals, it's, it's out. There are definitely songs that are on my short list that will never, ever get to be played. Um, the top of that list, to be perfectly honest, is satisfied by Richard Marks. Mm. I love that song. I want to play it. I want to sing it from the rooftops. I know that if we do it, it, will fall super flat yeah. and, and all of that work will be for nothing. But if you don't know the song satisfied by Richard Marks, pause this podcast and go and watch it right now because it's amazing. His hair is amazing. The song is amazing. It modulates like in the middle of the verse and back to the chorus. Like there's so many modulations it is. And then there's a, there's a legit key change at the end. It's uh, it's poetry. Cool. And he's I don't got know that song. I'll check it out. Featheriest mullet of all time, Richard Marks. I kind of love Richard Marks' mullet. You know, we do Satisfied by Ian Moore. Oh. Which is also, also good. One last Richard Marks fact. Uh, he is married to Daisy Fuentes. So he's doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. No one should feel bad for Richard Marks. Yeah. He's got all that satisfied money, and uh, he is married to Daisy Fuentes, the popular VJ from MTV in the early to mid 90s. Daisy and designer of. Close lines at Coles. Oh. Found that out the other day. Man, this has been probably the most educational episode we have it's ever been. It's been factoid filled, my friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the the episode's a hot mess, but there's a lot of it. <laughs> We're all over the place, but boy, we've learned some things. No, it's good. So moving along, um, talking about uh, well, we kind of delved into this a bit, you know, great uh, song selections and bad song selections. We had uh, we had a dance floor full of people on Wednesday night and started into <laughs> Everybody Have Fun Tonight by Wang Chung. And we <laughs> lost them. We lost sure. them for the entire set. Um, it's just one of those things. Uh, and then it, it was weird on Saturday. We had a, a pretty fickle audience. They would come and they would go. Uh, and I think it was because the the tables that they were sitting at were so close that if they heard a song they liked, they were like, woo! And they'll walk up front and then if they heard a song they didn't like, like, well, oh, yeah, it cost them nothing to go back to their chair. Yeah, like, well, my drink's right there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of drinks um, and dancing, um, I believe it is um, David Lee Roth quoted as saying that above 120 BPM, the people on the dance floor start spilling their drinks. 
Oh, so they they need to keep it under that. Got to keep it under that. Yeah, well, they should have. Th- this must have been pre hot for teacher then. Uh, or that's just not a dance tune. No, it really isn't. That being said, "Dance the Night Away" great song. Great song. People really yeah. really dig that one, and it's it's a fun one to sing. Jukebox Zero did that song actually. <laughs> hey, well there you go. Yeah, one of one of the keepers. Yeah, no, there were there were definitely some there was there were some good ones in there, but yeah. there were some clunkers too. Like we did the breakup song by the Greg Kinn band. And uh, that one just never really. Uh, I can't imagine it. Can't imagine it. You know, the other thing that we've really learned is that um, we now keep certain songs as audibles. We don't set list them. Yeah. Uh, Let's get it on as one. Mm-hmm. Let's get it on has a moment in the night, and doing it sometime other than its moment is not going to work. And um, the room will tell you when it's time. Absolutely. Um, it used to be one that I, I'd pull out at uh, at acoustic gigs. Um, and it, the other benefit of let's get it on is that it can be a three minute excursion or a oh, 12 yeah. minute excursion depending totally. on the vibe and totally. you can vibe that song as long as you want. Yep. Yep. The other tunes that we have decided to not standard set list, but to have as sort of tip of our fingers audibles are the ones that are like current pop numbers or recent pop numbers, mm-hmm. um, Take by the ocean shape of you, um, shut up and dance. Yeah. Um, because you got to have a particular audience for those. And it totally kills with a young audience that listens to the radio. Mm-hmm. And that's the only audience those kill with. Right. So you know, if, if, if um, we had a bar gig a couple of months ago where there was a, um, across the street, like one of those drink and paint <laughs> yeah. kind of part. It was like the whole place was about like wine and wine and painting. Oh yeah. And 20, 20 year old girls came out of there when it closed and came into the bar where we were and we crushed with all those tunes. Yeah. Killed. Um, and that was the first time I've ever seen shut up and dance really work. Uh, it worked well enough. I kept the video of it and posted it everywhere. It's one of the, it's the top of my demos on my website right now uh, because the energy was so amazing. And, um, but up until then, I've been wondering like, God, is this song just over? Do we not, is it not a fit for us? And I, no, it was about the, it was about the audience. I think I chimed in. I was like, it most certainly is not over. So yeah, yeah it's, it's all about pacing. You know, the, the other thing to think about is that, you know, if you're, if you're trying to, um, if you're trying to run a set, you know, there's kind of, you know, you had mentioned that there's like a W shape to it. I would say it's a bit curvier than that. It's more of like a, you know, kind, oh, yeah. kind of like soft hills and valleys. Uh, yeah. It, you, yeah. What I, what I mean by, so, you know, um, what I was referring to is I, I kind of try to follow a W shape. So the set wants to start with a lot of energy and then sort of ease into some mellower stuff and then have a spike in the middle that maybe is the bulk of the set mm-hmm. and then chill out a little bit toward the end and then end big. Yeah. So but up, down, up, down. So what's a, what's a uh, set, what's a set ender for you? Like what are your let's good, see what are your big ones? um this weekend I happen to have it up we're gonna end the first set with learn to fly by Foo Fighters okay. second set's gonna end with sympathy for the devil mm-hmm. and third set because we almost always close shows with it is gonna be purple rain got it so for us first set is going to end with probably one of three or four songs it's gonna be uh, centerfold by Jay Giles band uh, Footloose by um, good one. by that guy. That guy. <laughs> Loggins? By Kenny Loggins. Yeah, um, yeah. That one's actually the best one to really end on because it's got like a real strong, like abrupt ending. I'm cutting it loose. Doom, 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 bow, doom, bow. Like real high, yeah. like a uh, heavy hit. Um, yeah. The other one that we use a lot is uh, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go by Wham!, Nice. It's it's another one of those that people really dig, and you can just kind of drop them, uh, drop them on their head at the end. Second set, last set of the night is always, always going to be "Don't Stop Believing." Mm. We have some pretty hard rules. Um, our shows typically start with "Video Killed the Radio Star" by the Buggles because it's the first song ever played on MTV, and we are yeah. always going to end with "Don't Stop Believing." That's good. Lately, we've been starting with "Gold on the Ceiling" mm-hmm. Black Keys. Um, which is a pretty good opener. Starts pretty strong, and then and then we've ended every show for the last I don't know thirty with Purple Rain. Purple Rain's always good in that second set. We we tend to start the second set with Let's Go Crazy. Oh, that's good because you know you get to you get to kind of take them to church there at the beginning. 
and um, it's just got it's got super great energy, just a lot of fun to play, um, and yeah, just to, anytime you get to stand in front of a group of people and go, "Daily beloved, we gather yeah. here today to get through this thing called life." Yeah, all oh, this great slap back on the vocal. Oh, yeah, people love, love it. it. Love it. Love it. We I like to start a set with Folsom Prison Blues. It's really fun because everyone knows it. That riff is so iconic, right? And if you just it, without saying anything. By the way, don't say, hey, we're back at the beginning of your sets. Just start the song. Or play Hot for Teacher. We'll we'll take it full circle where after the second before the second verse, he goes, Hey, I heard you missed us. We're back. <laughs> Otherwise, don't mention yeah. it. Just start this. Just Otherwise, start don't it. mention it. You're obviously back. It's it's not doesn't bear mentioning. The other thing I like to do at the top of a set is uh song two mm-hmm. by Blur. That's a good one. Um just because it it has that great um, on and off mm-hmm. energy. And so you start with the, the quiet version of the riff. Um, I usually, I know on the recording, the drums start that one. I usually start that one on guitar because that riff wakes everybody up and they know that that, yeah. that whole big thing is coming. Um, and then we, we medley straight from there into seven nation army, um, which because it keeps the up down energy going. So we often start, yeah. Second or third set with that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them. We also we've we've started with uh, any way you want it by Journey because that's got a big you know it kind of jumps real nice. real heavy. So, um, well, and it doesn't it start a cappella. It does. It's another one of those Fun. things where um, having playing to a click and having a reference um, helps yeah. start things very um, very cleanly and uh, yeah. gives you the starting notes that you need. <laughs> Well, I feel like we covered song song yeah. selection. Any questions anybody has, you know, hit us up and we'll uh, we'll get get to them next week. Absolutely. Uh, Want to thank you all for continuing to support us. Um, I haven't told Dan this, but on the um, the podcasting platform that we publish to, we are um, number thirty in the top performing arts podcasts. Sweet, which all is right. cool. You know, I mean, people ask me all the time, like, "Hey, how's the podcast going?" And I'm like, "I don't know." Because <laughs> to be perfectly honest, you know, Dan and I kind of started doing this to nobody. Uh, yeah. So the fact that anybody's listening is amazing. And um, it's just been really cool uh, to hear from you guys and um, kind of grow the the community and just kind of be a, um, a second, not a second voice, but a different voice in the conversation. Because there are, there are certain, um, there are certain voices in the community that I do feel are, um, are, are not positive. They're not, uh, supportive. And, you know, I want everybody who listens to this know that we want you to succeed and we want to show, show you what we've learned, you know, over the years, um, that can help you succeed and go further faster because, uh, we really could have used that when we needed it. You know, <laughs> From Atlanta, Georgia, this is Adam Johnson. From Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm Dan Ray. This has been the Cover Band Confidential Podcast. Bye. Take care.